Hello there. They came to claim safe haven. They saw, they tasted the food and trashed the hotel. Great to be appreciated, isn't it? So it looks like the people of the Republic of Ireland are failing in their duty to serve up food that is to the liking of their hotel-occupying, danger-fleeing newcomers. Oh, and stick around, I have something to say on this new Rwanda deal too. New arrivals staying at the Clonia Strand Hotel in Dungarvan in the Republic of Ireland set about trashing their accommodation because the food was too spicy or something. One suspects they will also refuse to pay the bill for their uh, free food and lodging as a result. But all is OK, because if it's the same rules there as it is for the UK, then a government contractor will be along toot sweet to fix it all at the taxpayer's expense. And they'll arrive far faster than any local council pothole fixer would. One also assumes that this must be a last resort measure by these guests of the Irish people as they must have lodged many a complaint about the food with no remedy from the contractors forthcoming before resorting to physical action. Or, as some others have put forward, maybe their daytime fasting for Ramadan has something to do with it. Whatever the reason, it's not very uh, peaceful, is it? Anyway, there is a lot of, uh, shall I say, concern about this amongst the Irish people. Concern about being asked by their WEF puppet government to pay to look after all these newcomers, but then having it all thrown back in their faces. And it's all over social media, but not thus far in the mainstream press as far as I can see. I bet the Irish government can't wait to shove through their incitement to violence or hatred and hate offences bill onto the statute books so they can stamp on negative stories like this one. A bill that has been savaged by the supporters of free speech. A bill that doesn't even define what hate means. A bill that might make it a hateful act to criticise newcomers who complain about the free food they're offered. Now many politicians and commentators wanted a definition of hate included in that bill. But when he was the Irish Minister for Justice, Simon Harris said during the committee stage of the bill that the definition of hate put forward by others for inclusion in the bill would have the effect of making hate convictions very difficult to secure because each and every constituent element of the definition would have to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Ponder on that one. He didn't want a definition of the crime of hate included because to have one would require proof of the elements of the crime in a criminal court where stuff like theft and rape is defined, where every constituent element has to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Why must it be different for hate? Unless you want it as a catch-all instrument of prosecution or persecution. In Article 2.1 of that proposed law, it says, Hatred means hatred against a person or a group of persons in the state or elsewhere on account of their protected characteristics or any one of those characteristics. But not what the word hate actually means in law. This is so flawed that I cannot believe that the Irish people are not kicking off about it. Interestingly, that bill also includes making it an offence to deny or trivialise genocide. Very touchy in these current circumstances. And further, according to Yahoo News, there was a private meeting in the Irish Parliament last month where Elon Musk's ex agreed to abide by these new Irish hate speech laws once they are enacted. So you put a picture of a pig online and... or an image of a well-known prophet. Trying to market a BLT Sani in Ireland could become problematic. 
but as far as I can make out, this is just Ireland catching up with the rest of the EU and the UK. For example, we in the UK already have hate crimes, and we even record non-crime hate incidents, where no crime has even been committed. Gradually, our ability to speak openly and freely is being eroded away. Tomorrow, the UK Secretary of State for Leveling Up, Housing and Communities, Michael Gove, will be unveiling a new definition of extremism to help the police to feel more collars. And what's the betting that combating the far right takes up an unwarranted large proportion of it? Now, the next party of power, <sighs> Labour, is calling for a redefinition of the word Islamophobia. Not a definition, but a redefinition. Now, we all know Islam is a religion, while, says our very own NHS, a phobia develops when a person has an exaggerated or unrealistic sense of danger about a situation or object. So therefore, it is logical, isn't it, to assume that Islamophobia is when a person has an exaggerated or unrealistic sense of danger about the religion of Islam. It's about a sense of danger, not about hatred or dislike or whatever -y, and it's about a situation or object, not individual people. But there are many activist bodies and people out there trying to change this logical definition into a sort of blasphemy law special to their own preferred religion so that it becomes part of UK hate crime incitement laws to speak against it. To the point you cannot even criticise the religion or say anything bad about it or those who practise it. Labour will start that process if they get into power by voting for Parliament to officially adopt such a redefinition. Now, the only way to stop Labour is to not vote for them or to insist that all religions, including Christianity, get exactly the same protection. Once they look at the prospect of huge swathes of blasphemy laws covering everything from Hinduism to Scientology, I think they'd drop the whole thing. Now, I've morphed one of these proposed working definitions of Islamophobia to run past you as a proposal of my own. Christianophobia although I would not use the suffix of phobia if this were for real. A fear, prejudice and hatred of Christians or non-Christian individuals that leads to provocation, hostility and intolerance by means of threatening, harassment, abuse, incitement and intimidation of Christians and non-Christians both in the online and offline world, motivated by institutional, ideological, political and religious hostility that transcends into structural and cultural racism, which targets the symbols and markers of being a Christian. And that wording was taken from one of the proposals for Islamophobia. Now, you may think Christians don't need such protection, but you'd be wrong. Not only are Christians being arrested for praying and quoting from the Bible in this country, according to opendoors.com that runs the World Watch List 2024, two in every five Christians in Asia face persecution. So we must either protect all religions in exactly the same way or none at all. And now to this new Rwanda policy. The idea is that we tell the tens of thousands of failed asylum seekers that we can't deport, that we'll give them 3,000 quid apiece to voluntarily go to Rwanda. This is similar to the offer made to those volunteering to go back to their own country of origin. But by going to Rwanda, they will also get a five-year integration package, just like the original Rwanda scheme promises. And under the original Rwanda relocation system, stuck in Parliament right now, we've already agreed to pay Rwanda 171 grand for each one we send there. 
but under the original deal we'd be taking someone from Rwanda for every asylum seeker we sent there. Is this new deal also reciprocal in the same measure? And one assumes that any criminal offence committed whilst there will end up with them on a plane back to the UK, with our court's blessings. Now as this is voluntary, the courts and activists can't prevent them leaving. But what if they dislike Rwanda after getting there, or Rwanda dislikes them? I reckon they'll be straight back. Now according to reports, those that refuse this offer to go to Rwanda will end up here unable to officially work and no access to benefits or housing. The soy latte swilling wokesters will not like that one. Lawfare will be brought into play and we will continue to house, feed and look after them. I personally think that this new Rwanda deal will turn into go to the UK, have a great time, then when you get bored, get on a paid holiday to Rwanda and when you get bored there, demand to return to the UK and the courts will issue an order and back they'll come. The fact that they will have signed to say they're going to Rwanda voluntarily will cut no ice with our woke courts. They will come up with some legal wheeze that makes the UK responsible forever for them from the moment they enter the UK waters in their dinghies. Be in no doubt. Anyway, I think the Tories are using this new scheme to try and deflect away from the massive numbers of legal migrants they are allowing in every single day. <laughs>